Alright, so this uh, presentation, this video is going to be on covalent bonds, both network and molecular. And by the end of the lesson, you'll be able to hopefully explain the properties of both molecular and covalent network solids in terms of their structure and their bonding. So the first thing, first, molecular solids. Here's an example called sulfur. It's um, an element, obviously, and it has a low melting point and does not conduct electricity. So hopefully you can work out the reasoning why using structure and bonding. So the reason why they have low melting points is that molecular solids are made of molecules. It's kind of in the name. And there are strong bonds within the molecules. So that means that they have strong intramolecular forces, but there are weak attractions between the molecules, weak intermolecular forces, as you can see from the diagram. The carbon dioxide, very strong bond between the carbon and oxygen, very strong intramolecular bonding, but very weak intermolecular bonding between the carbon dioxide molecule. So in terms of melting point, molecular solids, as we've previously seen with the example of sulfur, have low melting and boiling points. This is because the molecules are held together by weak intermolecular forces. This means that little energy is required to break these weak intermolecular forces. The molecules, in the, <coughs> the molecules themselves are not broken up because there's very strong intramolecular bonding. They just move apart from each other when molted. Um, when melted. So in terms of conductivity, molecular solids do not contain charged particles like ions and ionic bonding. Therefore, they do not conduct electricity because there's no free-moving charged particles. Solubility, that will depend on the polarity of the molecular solid and the polarity of the solvent. Polar molecules dissolve in polar solvents. So for instance, um, sugar, uh, which is a polar molecule, will dissolve in water, which is a polar solvent. And nonpolar molecules, oil and grease will dissolve in non-polar solvents like carbon tetrachloride and the rule for that is like dissolves <coughs> like okay so we've gone through um, molecular covalent bonding so the next uh, type of covalent bonding is covalent network with diamond silica and graphite so there you see a wonderful picture of a diamond which has covalent network bonding so diamond um, as you might be aware has very high melting points about 1,000, 2,000 degrees Celsius, and they most do not conduct electricity, but there are provisos, so watch out. Now you've also got giant covalent network solids, and they're made of large networks of atoms arranged in covalent networks with strong covalent bonds between them. <coughs> they can consist of linear chains and 2D layers, like graphite, which is an allotrope or type of carbon, and 3D networks, like silicon dioxide, which we have here, you have strong covalent bonds between the silicon and oxygen atoms with every uh, oxygen atom bonded to uh, four silicons uh, two sorry two uh, two silicons and every silicon bonded to four adjacent oxygen molecules in a lattice just like ionic bonding in terms of uh, the lattice in terms of linear chains, you've got infinitely long one-dimensional chains. An example of that will be the plastic polyethene. <coughs> and in terms of two-dimensional layers, um, so maybe one question in the exam could be comparing and contrasting diamond to graphite. So graphite's an example of a two-dimensional um, layered uh, network covalent solid. So it's an allotrope of carbon, a type of carbon. It's made of sheets of covalent bonded carbon atoms. So in each sheet, each carbon bond, uh, atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms. And there's weak intermolecular forces holding the sheets together. Okay. <coughs> and each carbon atom used is three of its four valence electrons to form the covalent bonds in the layers, leaving one free. And this remaining electron um, is allowed to move around, which is known as delocalization, between the layers. So therefore, graphite can conduct electricity. And there's an example there. So you've got the 2D layers where one carbon is bonded to three adjacent carbons, and you have these in the layer of stacks. So there's another reason why you can um, use graphite as a lubricant. 
because these layers can move freely because it's the localization of the electrons. And that means that it can be used as a lubricant and also it can be used as a conductor of electricity because of the delocalized electron able to, to move. In terms of melting, um, 3D covalent solids are at high melting points uh, due to strong covalent bonds within the layers. Okay, so there we go. Um, so in terms of electro con electrical conductivity, the only non-metallic element and the only covalent substance that conducts electricity is graphite due to the delocalized electrons which are free to move through the network. Here we go. Diagram of it. Okay, so this is a mistake you made in your midterm, but a large number of you did. <coughs> um, graphite does not dissolve, does not uh, dissolve soluble in water due to the strong covalent bonds in those layers. And the one that you'll compare with usually for graphite is diamond, which is a three-dimensional network. And it's also an allotrop of carbon, a uh, type of carbon, which exists this time in a three-dimensional network. So in diamond, as opposed to graphite, each carbon is bonded covalently to four of the carbon atoms. Not three, four. Graphite is three, and, car and diamond is four. And these form a tetrahedral arrangement there, which you can see below. And there's an example there of the diamond. Uh, so you've got the four strong covalent bonds to each carbon, as opposed to graphite, where there was three. So this means that um, diamond has a very high melting point, and it's very strong. And um, another three-dimensional uh, network solid that you might be used to compare graphite with <coughs> is silicon dioxide, which has a similar structure to diamond. In this case, each silicon atom is covalent bonded to four oxygen atoms previously discussed. So again, a very high melting point because you've got to break these four covalent bonds. And finally, the other properties, the three-dimensional network solids have very strong high melting points, as previously discussed due to these strong covalent bonds between the atoms. For example, crystals of diamond will vaporize at 5,000 degrees Celsius, so very strong, a lot of heat energy required to break those bonds. They don't conduct electricity as there is no charged particles, so diamond and silicon dioxide do not conduct electricity, but graphite does due to its delocalized electron. And finally, they do not dissolve in water due to the strong covalent bonds. So hopefully, um, there's enough information there to get some excellence questions in this section.